This video is commentary for the Satellite Bible Atlas, Map 17, Samaria. The region of Samaria is part of the central hill country, extending north from the hill country of Judah. Note the general location of Samaria on regional map 12.3. The Samaria region was made up of two tribal allotments, Ephraim in the south and Manasseh in the north, both sons of Joseph. Samaria, or Shomron in Hebrew, means to guard or guarded. The region of Samaria takes its name from the city of Samaria, labeled by a letter S on this map. The city of Samaria was the third capital of the northern kingdom of Israel. It was built by the Baal-worshipping kings Omri and Ahab. Note that the term Samaria can have three different meanings. Samaria can refer to the capital city of the region, or geographically to the central hill country region, shaded yellow on this map, or politically to the entire northern kingdom of Israel, which came into being after the death of Solomon. Note the geographical regions surrounding Samaria. To the west is the coastal or Sharon Plain. To the north are Mount Carmel and the Jezreel Valley. To the east is the deep lower Jordan Valley. And to the south are the Shvela, hill country, and wilderness of Judah. As mentioned, Samaria, like Judah, is hill country. However, Samaria, especially in the north in Manasseh, has wider valleys and plains that make it more open, or accessible than Judah. Note a series of wide east to west running valleys that form a convenient way to crisscross through Samaria. The route in these valleys is called the Trans-Samaria Highway. The Trans-Samaria Highway connects the Mediterranean Sea and coastal plain to the Jordan Valley and Gilead. All the capital cities of the northern kingdom of Israel were along the Trans-Samaria Highway. The first capital was at Shechem, between Mount Ebal and Mount Gerizim. Tirza was the second capital, and finally Samaria was built on a hilltop with better access to the coast. Note some of the major features and sites of the Samaria region on map 1-2. Here is Bethel, where Jeroboam, the first king of the north, built a corrupt religious center. To the north in Ephraim is Shiloh, where Joshua set up the tabernacle. Here is the Trans-Samaria Highway and the three capital cities, Shechem, Tirzah, and Samaria. To the north is Dotan, where Joseph was thrown into a pit by his brothers. The central hill country of Samaria is the focus of Map 1-7. On the southern part of the map, note the sites of Bethel and Ai. Soon after Abram came into the land, he worshipped the Lord on a hill between Bethel and Ai. When Jacob fled from Esau to Aram, he stopped at Bethel and had a dream in which he was reassured that indeed the transcendent God does communicate with mankind on earth. Bethel means place or house of God. The city of Ai was the location of God's second victory in the Promised Land, with Joshua and the Israelites. Israel failed to conquer Ai the first attempt because they began to claim responsibility for their earlier victory at Jericho. But when Israel understood that they were coming into the promised land by God's power and not their own, Ai was conquered. 1.9 shows the Bethel Ai region in greater detail. Ai of Abraham's time is identified as the large early Canaanite ruin called Ettel. However, Excavations at Ettel have apparently not uncovered any ruins dating to the conquest of Joshua. It is possible that the name I shifted to a nearby hilltop in Joshua's day. Ruins dating to Joshua's time have been excavated at Chirbet Makatir. We found this collection of pottery inside a building. You can see a large storage jar here, and then next to it a bowl or perhaps some kind of a jug. Here we have a small what we call a dipper juglet and next to that another vessel. It looks again like a bowl or possibly a large jug. It's significant to us because it allows us to date our fortress here and this pottery is typical of the late bronze one period 15th century BC around the time of Joshua. 
Back on map 1-7, follow the road of the patriarchs that goes north from Bethel to Shechem. Just east of this road is Shiloh. At Shiloh, in the hill country of Ephraim, the tabernacle containing the Ark of the Covenant was set up. We're here at Shiloh. When the Israelites conquered the land, they came and Joshua set up the tabernacle here. Where the people are is a possible location of where the tabernacle sat. This is also the location of where um, Hannah came and when she had her son Samuel, she dedicated him, dedicated him, um, and he grew up here, right here at Shiloh. Now let's move north of Shiloh to the Trans-Samaria Highway. Remember, the Trans-Samaria Highway runs in a series of wide valleys that run through the heart of Samaria. From Adam at the Jordan River, the route follows the Wadi Farah to Tirza, then goes to Shechem. Shechem is connected to the coastal plain in the west through the Shechem Valley or Nahal Shechem. The city of Samaria sits along this western part of the route. This Google Earth photo shows the Shechem region looking west. Today the modern Arabic town of Nablus is built over Shechem between Mount Gerizim on the south to the left and Mount Ebal on the north. The Trans-Samaria Highway comes from the Mediterranean Sea in the west straight up Nahal Shechem to the wide plains in the Shechem region. At Shechem, the Lord first said to Abram, To your descendants I will give this land. With this promise to Abram, God put his name and reputation on the line in a practical, facts-on-the-ground way. So, has God shown himself to be God? The relationship of the descendants of Abram to this land at various times throughout history is observable evidence that the God of the Bible is the one true God. We're standing on Mount Gerizim and below us is the town of Shechem and to our north is Mount Ebal. When Abraham first came into the land, God promised at Shechem that his descendants would inherit this land. And hundreds of years later, under the time of Joshua, Joshua and the Israelites came into Shechem and testified that their God had fulfilled that same promise. Joshua had the Israelites stand on Mount Gerizim and Mount Ebal in a covenant confirmation ceremony and in acknowledgment that indeed the God of Abraham made good on his promise. Joshua built an altar on Mount Ebal to worship the Lord. Archaeologists have discovered what appears to be an altar complex on the north side of Mount Ebal. However, the structure apparently dates to the 1200s BC, which would put it in the period of the Judges. Let's go back to map 1-7 to examine more closely the Wadi Farah, which is the eastern section of the Trans-Samaria Highway, connecting Tirza to Adam in the Jordan Valley and to Gilead. This is most likely the route that Jacob used when he journeyed from Penuel and Sukkot to Shechem. We're standing here in a valley that goes through Samaria and connects the two cities, Sukkot and Shechem. When Jacob returned from the land of Aramea, he traveled between those two cities, probably in this valley. The shechem Penuel connection via Wadi Farah is illustrated by the fact that the first king of the north during the divided monarchy, Jeroboam, built Shechem and dwelt there, and he went out from there and built Penuel. Penuel became the northern kingdom's administrative center in Gilead. During the divided monarchy, the northern kingdom was called Israel, while the descendants of David ruled over the southern kingdom of Judah. The northern kingdom lasted 210 years, but none of its kings followed the Lord. Back on map 1-7, remember the western section of the Trans-Samaria Highway is Nahal Shechem, which passes near the third capital of the northern kingdom, the city of Samaria. Samaria was built by kings Omri and Ahab, who made Baal worship the state-supported religion of the northern kingdom. Ahab built himself an ivory-decorated palace in Samaria, as well as a temple to Baal. Kings and prophets, like Elisha, walk through Samaria's gates. 
Later, when King Jehu purged Israel of Baal worship, he made the temple of Baal into a latrine. The city and kingdom of Samaria came to an end in 722 BC. The city withstood a siege of three years, but it was only kicking against the goads. The Lord had brought the Assyrian Empire as his tool to drive Israel into exile. This happened because the sons of Israel had sinned against the Lord their God, who brought them up from the land of Egypt. In the first century BC, Herod the Great built a temple to Caesar Augustus at the site and renamed it Sebastia, which means Augustus in Greek. Note one more location on map 17, Dotan, to the north of the trans samaria Highway overlooking the wide triangular shaped Dotan Valley. Dotan is where supernatural chariots of fire appeared in the days of Elisha. Earlier, Joseph had found his brothers grazing flocks near Dotan, but his brothers threw him into a water cistern. His brothers arranged to have Joseph sold to a caravan of Ishmaelites, who were bringing goods from Gilead to Egypt. But God incorporated the wicked plans of the brothers to bring about the preservation of the people of Israel in Egypt. Okay, this is a cistern. It's a kind of water insulation uh, similar to something like what Joseph's brothers put him into. Zach, you down there? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm standing on Mount Gerizim. Behind me are the ruins of ancient Shechem, which is where God first promised Abram that his descendants would inherit the promised land. Hundreds of years later, when Joshua and the Israelites came into this land, they came to this location and acknowledged that God had kept his promise. Here we are on Mount Gerizim. You can see Shechem behind me. That's where Jotham climbed up the mountain to condemn Abimelech and the people of Shechem for making him king. Also here is the city of Sychar. It's in this vicinity that Jesus stopped when traveling to Samaria um, and testified to the woman at Jacob's well. The Samaritan woman that Jesus met at the well said that you Jews believe that Jesus is worshipped in Jerusalem, but we believe that he is worshipped here on this mountain. She is referring to Mount Gerizim, which we are standing on right now. Hi, we're standing in the ruins of ancient Shiloh. Behind us are the ruins of Shiloh. We're here in Shiloh, where the tabernacle of the Lord was first set up in the days of Joshua. When Samuel was a boy, the Israelites took the Ark of the Covenant from here down to Aphek to the west and lost it in battle. Eli! Your yeah. two sons have been killed! How many idiots! And what's worse is the Ark of the Covenant has been taken by the Philistines! <laughs> In fact, Jeremiah comes and talks about the ruins of Shiloh to his Jerusalemite listeners. He says to them in the book of Jeremiah, But go now to my place, which was in Shiloh, where I made my name dwell at the first, and see what I did to it, because of the wickedness of the people of Israel. So they instructed the Benjamites, saying, Go and hide in the vineyards, and watch when the girls of Shiloh come out to join the dancing, then rush from the vineyards and each of you sees a wife from the girls of Shiloh and go to the land of Benjamin. We are standing in the narrow spot in the Wadi Farah. I'm standing here on a ruin called Makatir. The Bible gives very specific geography related to jo Joshua's conquest of the city. To the west, Joshua set an ambush while he himself camped on a ridge across a valley from the city of Ai.